Today we need to again perform engine wash on CFM 56-5B which belongs to A321 today and because last time you asked about it you will see this and since we're gonna wash the engine with detergent you will see also this but more about it a little bit later now we need to repair our cycling and install all equipment on the engines and of course uh, we need to remove several connections like last time so let's go i already refueled the cycling and yeah now we need to preheat it so we are connected from the ground yeah we had we have 293 liters and we need heat heating and meanwhile this is preheating we can start with the disconnecting of the lines on the engine so let's do that so there are three lines which we need to remove it is uh, ps3 p25 and anti-ice well uh, muscle pressure so I'll start with the ps3 and ps25 or p ps3 and p25 and since my colleagues start with the rat test on the airplane next to us i'll try to explain why we need to remove ps3 p25 and muscle pressure from anti ice valve all three lines are responsible to deliver pressure from the core of the engine ps3 and anti ice valve receive the pressure from the ninth stage of high pressure compressor and p25 receive the pressure from the downstream of the booster and since during wash we'll send huge amount of water through the core of the engine we would like to avoid getting this water to sensitive electronic of eec or to anti ice valve control section and here comes the question what what happens if planes flies through the storm doesn't the water get into these pipes during the rain uh, the answer is quite simple no because water is heavier than air and the centrifugal force of the fan during normal engine operations prevents the water from entering to the core and this water is then sent through the cold stream and if any small amount enters into the core it will evaporate due to high temperature of high pressure compressor. As you already saw, all three lines are removed, so we can continue with installation of the adapters on the fan of the engine. I already explained this in previous video, but let's do it again. Adapters are here to evenly distribute the water inside of the core of the engine, and they hold on the spinner thanks to four cables with the hooks which you engage on the fan blades. And of course, every piece of adapter is made out of materials to prevent damage to the engine, but still strong enough to keep the equipment on the place during whole procedure. And by the way, this adapter is exclusively made for CFM 56-5B. Uh, for any other engine which is in our fleet, we need to have different adapters. But all this was explained in previous video, which you can find in the description of this video or in the top right corner. So later on, take a look. Whenever you install adapter on the spinner, you need to see that those hooks which hold it on the blades, they're not touching the blades. And of course the spray nozzle, they don't touch the blade. So you have always space around. And like that, you need to check each hook and of course each nozzle. So there is space behind, there is space in front of it. It's pointing towards the hot section so that's it and of course each each of the uh, locks need to be secure on the place so like this it should be safe to use so as I mentioned before now we're going to clean the engine with the cleaner so nice feature of this equipment is that it can 
suck the cleaner automatically based on the program so all what I need to do I just need to place it over here select the program and basically now we are ready for the engine wash I already flushed the probes before so now I just need to wait until my colleagues are gonna be finished and yeah, we are ready to wash. Okay, everything is done. I'm got those are open. My colleague is in the cockpit, and we are ready for run. Deacon is on. And you're clear. program is active and under last video many of you complained that you want to see what comes out of the engine and I didn't show it in previous video so one of my colleagues took over control of the equipment and I can show you what is coming out of the engine and actually here you can see it this is what is coming out of course there is a lot of foam but later on you will see how it looks when we switch off the engine so here you can actually see how it looks after usage of the solution. And this is coming out of it. Okay, for second for second attempt, we are not gonna need solution. Now we're going to get good water. And since it is uh, five minutes, we can start engine one again and clean it for you. Now I just need to wait until my colleague gives me signal from the cockpit. In this case it is wing and engine scan light. And only then I will start the program. And this procedure is called engine rinse, which means that we are trying to wash away the cleaning agent with a pure water and this procedure can be performed up to three times. We need to be sure that all foam, which is agent, uh, is removed from the engine. And by the way, reason for this wash with a cleaning agent is most of the time because uh, we had a bird strike, which means that there are organic debris or there is some oil deposit. What you see now is actually third rinse and there is still a little bit of foam remaining but that will be blown away. So this is how it looks after third run with the uh, pure water. Basically we can remove our equipment from the engine and yeah all what's remaining is dry trail. Under the last video somebody asked why we don't use uh, collector tanks uh, for the catching of the solution. The reason for this is that our hangar is connected to the special drain system with the proper filtration. So that's the reason why we don't use them. And all what's remaining is to perform dry crank without the water since we already removed the adapters. This dry crank is good to push out water from the connections and it will blown away remaining foam from the core. This is how it looks after dry crank. As you can see, the foam is gone, which is great. We can install everything, close everything, and we can go for engine run. So let's go. Okay, the water was pushed out from the lines and we can reconnect them. And by the way, P25 is optional sensor, which means that you are not gonna find it on every CFM56. Uh, it measures the pressure downstream of the booster and you can find it uh, directly behind the variable bleed valves around six o'clock, which is basically entrance to high pressure compressor. And then I connect PS3 line, which measure the high pressure compressor discharge pressure. And this is a very important value because PS3 and few other values limits the fuel which is set by ECU to hold requested N1 speed. 
And last connection is muscle pressure for anti haze valve. This pressure actually controls the opening and closing of the anti haze valve. And as a last thing, I need to secure the lines with the locking cable. It's done. We can close the fun codes and go for run. We've been towed to run-up position and we just got confirmation that a run-up chuck's been placed in front of the wheels. Which means that we are ready for run-up and we can start preparation for the run. One of the first thing is adjustment of the seat. It is very important because you need to reach to brake pedals. You will see later in the video why. After breathing and after startup checklist, during which we basically check uh, functionality of uh, systems which we're gonna need, like for example, engine fire detection system, which we're testing at the moment, we will start both engines. Okay. Uh, mode selector, ignition start. Engine one, start. Pressure. Engine one, stabilized, 50 seconds. And whenever both engines are started, we need to wait five minutes to stabilize them. And only then we can start with all procedures. Five minutes, set engine anti-ice on. Engine anti-ice, engine anti-ice. Increase of the power. Stabilize. Engine bleed, backs are off. Engine bleed. Bing anti ice. And actually everything what you saw so far and here was preparation of the engine to release the air from the bleed ducts overboard. This way we'll remove all remaining solution from the pipes. Brakes apply, brake off, increase the power to 60%. And now we are increasing uh, the power of the engines to 60% of N1 and we need to hold it there for 10 minutes and as you can see we need to have a brakes applied. This is a requirement from the Airbus. And actually that was the reason why we adjust the distance to the pedals because during these 10 minutes we need to hold the brake pedals uh, pressed but uh, we're gonna switch uh, from time to time so each of us can get a bit of the rest but anyway we still need to be ready to take over. This procedure is really necessary because only after this run we can be sure that there will be no smoke smell even after cleaning of the engine. 10 minutes, back to idle. Idle set. Five minutes. Parking brake set. Brake release. Okay, five minutes. And anti air system off. Turn cross bleed valve to auto. Set pack one and two on. And check for odor. After 10 minutes of monitoring, we found no odor, which means that we can switch to APU bleed. And uh, after cooldown procedure, we can switch off the engines. Engine one off. Fuel flow zero. Engine two, shut down. Fuel flow zero. 20% big gun off. Ground, this is Lima Bravo Echo. Yeah, I got uh, Reporting end of the run up. We can go back. Uh, okay, I just take a call if you have a position where I can put the plane there. Okay, Bravo Echo, cockpit, uh, we have a position for you and I will take it there. Confirm, we are waiting for the request for switching of the parking brake. Okay.
This is all about uh, cleaning of the gas path of the CFM56 uh, 5B. Uh, please let me know in the comments what you think about this video. And uh, of course, let me know if this was enough, what you was expecting to see. As always, I would like to ask you to don't use this as a replacement for maintenance manual, but always use latest documentation released by manufacturer. Big thanks to Austrian Airlines that they let me record all these videos for you. Uh, big thanks to each and everybody for uh, watching and especially to members for their support. I'm going on vacation, so uh, maybe in next two weeks uh, there will be no video, but uh, latest uh, in the mid-September there will be, of course, a new upload. That's all from my side. My name is Tomáš, this was Recrab Maintenance with Zeto, and I will see you on next video. Bye!